everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be talking to you guys about some run Disney tips. Um, if you guys have seen my last video you'll know that I have just returned from Princess Half Marathon Weekend 2020 and that was my very first run Disney experience. Um, I am somebody who has run over 50 different sanctioned races um, in my time as a long distance runner um, and this was my first run Disney and it's definitely unique. Um, so I thought it would be helpful to share with you all some tips that I think are important um, to keep in mind when you are starting a Run Disney uh, journey. <laughs> um, I also took a little bit of a non-traditional approach to participating in my Run Disney event and I wanted to kind of share that experience with you because it's possible to like still have a really good time um, and really enjoy yourself during a run Disney event and not do the more traditional approach to these events. So without further ado, I'm going to take you through my experience and share with you guys some tips that I picked up during my time running Princess 2020. So as you can see for this video, I'm wearing my Disney Princess Half Marathon shirt featuring the lovely Cinderella. And I'm also wearing my commemorative uh, Disney Princess 2020 uh, mini ears. Um, if you can tell, it's like a sparkly purple with uh, the castle right there in the middle and on the sides it does say um, Disney Princess Half Marathon Weekend 2020, which is really great. I'm going to kind of go in chronological order of how you might experience um, a run Disney event um, so that you are prepared in that order. So the first thing I want to take you guys through is registration. For those of you who might not be familiar with Run Disney, there are four major race weekends at Walt Disney World. Um, I think they don't have any at Disneyland. There used to be some race weekends at Disneyland, um, and I think they will return in the future, but right now all of the in-person race weekends happen at Walt Disney World in Orlando. So you have your Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend, which happens in January, um, your Disney Princess Half Marathon Weekend, um, which happens in February, Star Wars Weekend, um, which happens I think in April, um, and then Wine and Dine, which happens during the Epcot Food and Wine Festival in the fall. So you have really four race weekends that you can choose from, all themed differently. Um, like I said, I participated in Princess, which has been a dream of mine since, I don't know, for the better part of a decade, um, and I'm so happy that I finally got the chance to uh, run Princess. And I am looking forward to running in the Walt Disney World Marathon weekend sometime in the future. So the thing that you want to know before you register is when registration opens for these races. These are extremely popular races um, and they almost always sell out. Um, so you're going to want to know what day your registration is um, for the race that you want to run. Put that date in your calendar, clear off the time of your calendar where the registration will open so you can make sure that you are there to sign up for the race. The day I registered for Princess, it was in June. It was during a weekday. Um, it was at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. Um, so it was in the middle of the work day. So what I did was I put a block on my work calendar saying like, I am not free at this time so I can register for this race. Um, it actually, funny story, ended up being, uh, there was a meeting that was put on my calendar, a staff meeting, um, and I had requested um, if, if I could join the staff meeting later um, because I was registering for this race. Luckily, I work at a place where my staff understands <laughs> that I'm a distance runner and I participate in races and so they were totally understanding. They're like, yeah, we'll just like wait until you're done registering. Um, I thought it was only going to take like 10 minutes tops. Uh, turned out that I, it was about 25 minutes before I was all the way registered. Um, so what you'll need to do um, is just make sure that you are blocking like a half hour before the registration opens because um, you do need to get into a virtual waiting room. Um, so you're like standing in line. They can't have everybody try and register for it this, at the same time. Otherwise, the site would crash. Um, so I would say like half hour before, make sure you're getting into that virtual waiting room. And then you'll want to block for about a half hour afterwards because sometimes it takes time for your spot in line to open up so you can then go register. Um, like I said, it took me about 25 minutes for my spot in line to finally open up um, and register. Um, but I did. Um, got my card out, paid, 
the fee and got registered and got my spot in the fairy tale challenge which is for for princess weekend that is the 10k and the half marathon registration can be kind of stressful but you need to just make sure that you are blocking off time in your schedule to do it um and if you're there right on the day that it opens you should be able to get into it um these are extremely popular races um and i think disney does the best that they can to open it up to everybody and have as many spots available as possible second thing that i want to talk about is proof of time so this is something that i haven't had to do in a race before um and i've run like i said about 50 races now and I have never had to submit a proof of my time before because usually I'm not like too too bothered as to what uh, place in line in the corrals that I get put into in the races that I do. And I think a lot of races generally trust that you're putting in an accurate estimation of the time that you think you would run the race in um, and they'll place you in corrals accordingly. Disney gives you a period of time where you can actually submit a proof of time in order to be placed into corrals. And the reason why I think that Disney requires it in order to be placed into a corral is because a lot of people are pushing and shoving and trying to get to the front. Um, everybody wants to be the first in line. Nobody wants to be in the back. Um, it's, it's more of a experience. Um, I guess than maybe some other races there's more on the course to enjoy and look at and everybody wants to be the first ones to do that and so that's why Disney kind of requires people to actually submit a proof of time meaning that you need to submit um, results from a previous race that you have run in order to be placed into a corral based on your time. I forgot to do that. <laughs> um, I believe they give you until, so we registered in June and they gave us, I think until sometime in October, maybe November to submit your proof of time. Um, and you don't have to submit a proof of time. So say Run Disney is gonna be your first running racing experience. You don't have to submit a proof of time. You will get placed into a corral regardless of whether or not you've run a race before. However, if you do not submit a proof of time, they have the right to automatically place you in the very last corral of whichever race you're registering for. I just forgot to submit it. <laughs> um, and so I like took it with a grain of salt. I'm like, you know what? I didn't do what I was supposed to do, even though I had proof of times for the distances that I was running. It's okay if I get placed in the last corral. Um, and yes, I wound up getting placed into the, to the last corral for both races um, that I ran. Um, actually for the 10k, I think I got placed in the second to the last corral and in the uh, half I did get placed into the last one. I messed up. I didn't put it in. I didn't put in proof of time. I wasn't going to try and dispute it. Um, from what I've heard, you can go to race relations on the day um, of the expo, whenever you go to the expo, to ask to be switched into corrals if you can prove that you have tried to submit a proof of time. If you did not attempt, even like a attempt to submit a proof of time, they will not switch your corral for you. Um, so I you know, I'm like, I'm not even going to try. Like, this was my own fault. I didn't get um, a proof of time and, and that's on me. Um, and that's something that I'm definitely going to make sure to do for future Run Disney events. Um, I think it is just something that I wasn't used to doing for any other event that I've done before. Um, so I just forgot that it was something that you have to do for Run Disney. So make sure you're doing it if you don't want to be placed into the last corral automatically. Being in the last corral is not the end of the world and I'll get to that um, in a little bit when I talk about uh, the actual race experience. Um, you can still have a really great time if you get placed in the last corral and I will tell you about that in a little bit. So the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is staying off site. Staying on Disney property is really expensive um, and there are a lot of much cheaper options um, available to you. If you want to stay off property you'll likely be able to save some money um, and that seemed appealing to me. <laughs> so um, we opted to stay offsite at a Airbnb in Kissimmee um, and it was much cheaper than staying at a Disney hotel. However, you do have to consider um, that when you stay on Disney property, you do get transportation back and forth from the races um, already included. That's as part of staying on Disney property. Um, and when you 
don't stay on Disney property, you don't have access to that transportation. So you have to keep that in mind um, when you are considering where you'd like to stay. What we did is on for the 10k my mom was actually staying with us because she was running the 10k as well um, and so she drove us from our spot in Kissimmee I think we were about 10 minutes away like a 10 minute drive from the Disney property and so she drove us uh, on race morning and uh, for the 10k so that worked out perfectly we left um, the hotel we left the Airbnb at quarter to four and we got there right at four o'clock parked at Epcot and walked ourselves over to the staging area and then the second day on the half marathon day we called an uber and what we did is we scheduled the uber the day before for a 345 pickup um and then we automatically had an uber request out there somebody picked us up um and then brought us to the, the disney property again we were there by four o'clock in the morning which was perfect there are Ubers out and about, um, however, they will probably be in really high demand. I remember we were in the Uber on Sunday morning for the half marathon um, and our driver just kept on getting request after request after request um, for pickups. And I was assuming that they were probably from all over the area trying to get to Epcot um, for uh, the half marathon. So make sure you're scheduling an Uber or a Lyft if that's the route you want to go. Um, they are around, you just need to make sure that you aren't waiting to the last second to call one. So staying off site really wasn't that bad. Um, we saved some money in our lodging expenses. It's totally possible to stay off site and still like get to and from the races in plenty of time. Um, so if you are feeling like you want to save some money and not stay at a Disney hotel, it is a-okay and you're gonna be able to be just fine um, on race morning as long as you're planning ahead and staying organized. Next thing I want to talk about is the expo. So the expo is where you are going to be picking up your race bib, your race shirts, um, and any Disney merchandise that you would like. One of the biggest things that kind of like stressed me out about the expo um, was that everybody in the Facebook groups that I was a part of about run Disney were saying that merchandise for the race weekend sells out like that um, and you have to be at the expo on the first day or you will not get any access to any merch <laughs> everything will be gone and clearly that is not the case um we went so the expo for princess weekend I think opened on Thursday we got there on Friday around 5 p.m. and the expo closed at 7. Everybody was saying you need to be there first thing in the morning because that's when everything will be fully stocked um, or you won't be getting anything essentially. So I was worried like the one merchandise item that I really wanted um, was commemorative ears and so I was like okay like we'll go into the merchandise building first when we get there um, just to see if they have ears and there was racks and racks and racks and racks of commemorative ears so we were totally fine. I was like preparing myself like you're probably not going to get them. It's the second day. There's two hours till close. You're probably not going to get them. Um, and I was going to be okay with that. Um, but they were there and I bought some. Um, and so I was really happy about that. So I would say there might be some items that do sell out. I know like the spirit jersey was like the big thing that like everybody was freaking out about. And I don't remember if I saw them because I honestly wasn't looking for them. But I, I think they are now doing a really good job of like stocking throughout the day. So not everything is going out all at once. If you are getting in to your Run Disney event like later on, if you're not going to be there right on the first day of the expo, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Out. So just keep that in mind. You're going to be okay. <laughs> if you have a particular item in mind, it's likely that they'll still have it in stock. Um, and if you don't, if they don't, then maybe you can ask somebody who might be working the expo who will know um, when they might be restocking. But the expo is super fun and um, definitely take in the whole expo go to the merchandise building you have to go get your bib <laughs> so make sure you're going to go get your bib before your race um and then also make sure that you're going to the expo itself which has all of the vendors who all have like really fun stuff really cool items to pick um i think we, we spent a good amount of time at the expo and i probably i wish we had some more time because we were there like right at the end of the day um and it was fun to just kind of like walk around and like they had a bar so we grabbed a drink and we walked around and looked at all the stuff 
and um, we like wanted to buy everything. <laughs> so um, definitely save some money for the expo itself because there are some really, really cool items both in the merchandise building and at the actual expo. So, and don't worry about missing out on commemorative merchandise because there's going to be some. Don't worry. All right, so I talked about getting to the race, but I wanna talk about kind of the start area. So the starting area is where you'll go um, before you head to the corrals of the race. Um, so Epcot parking lot, I believe every single race comes in and out of Epcot and the finish line is always in Epcot. The staging area is really cool. Um, they have a DJ and an MC getting everybody hyped up at this at a stage everybody everybody's so tired because it's like four in the morning and like nobody got any sleep they have character photo opportunities they have your gear check they have porta potties everywhere i believe there's like food if you wanted to get something to eat for breakfast i believe they have stuff there however it is always going to be packed and bumping with people. I believe they recommend folks to get to the staging area by 4 a.m. Um, and uh, for both races, we got there right at 4 a.m. Um, because after that, roads start closing down for the races. So you want to make sure that you are uh, there by 4. However, if you want to like take part in things like character photos, I recommend getting there much, much earlier than that um, because lines are long for character photos. Um, <laughs> there's a captive audience. People don't really have much to do other than wait in line. Um, and so we tried for both days we were there to get a character photo before the race. Um, we tried once for Mulan and we tried another time for Queen Minnie. Um, and both times the characters they get brought in at like 5 a.m. Um, I think mainly to encourage people to start heading to the corrals, but both days they got pulled in before we got to them. So if you want a character photo, make sure you're getting there right as the starting area opens, which I believe is 3 a.m. or 3.30 a.m. It might be different for every um, race, but make sure you know when it opens and if you want character photos, get there early. Speaking as a person, who was in the last corral for both races I participated in. Again, don't worry, your race experience is going to be great. There's a really well-known thing at the Run Disney races um, called the Balloon Ladies. And these are local women um, that Disney uh, offers bibs to in order to walk the races. And these folks, they are the very last folks to go over um, the starting mat and they maintain a 16 minute per mile pace. That is the minimum pace that you have to maintain in order to not get swept or um, taken off the course um, at a run Disney race. These women are called balloon ladies because they all have Mickey balloons attached to them. So you can ident you can see where they are. They're a good visual marker as to like what pace you have to maintain. The morning of the 10K, we were in the last corral um, and the way like the crowd moves, we somehow wound up like right at the back of the corral. Um, so we saw the balloon ladies, they were right there and we're like, okay, like now we have to like kind of like move quickly in order to make sure that we uh, don't get fall behind balloon ladies. Um, so um, we, started running I think we maintained a 12 to 13 minute pace per mile for the whole race and we didn't see the balloon ladies at all after we saw them in the corral so we really kind of moved. If you fall behind the balloon ladies I think they you don't automatically get swept but if you are behind them after um, they hit a certain point there are certain points along the course where um, what they call is parade buses or they'll tell you like you are not on pace and we're gonna have to take you off the course um, and so they'll put you on a bus and they'll send you back to the starting area. From what I understand, if you get swept, you still get a medal. Um, so don't worry if that's like the real thing that you're looking forward to. Um, but I do know that if you get swept and you are participating in a challenge, so for example, if you have signed up for the fairy tale challenge um, and you complete the 10K, but you get swept off the course for the half marathon, you will get both of the race medals, but you won't get the challenge medal. However, if you are somebody who is placed in the last corral and like me, um, are an experienced runner or racer, um, you, I don't think you have anything to worry about in terms of like actually getting swept. Um, there, you, it is totally possible to dodge around people and get kind of back to your normal pace. 
Um, it is really crowded because uh, these last corrals are full of folks who walk the courses and sometimes they're full of folks who aren't used to racing and may not know proper race etiquette of if you're walking like go to the sides. There were many times where it was just like from one side of the road to the other side of the road just like people walking. Um, usually people are nice if you just say excuse me they'll like move over so that you can get around them. Um, so I did that quite a bit. Um, but uh, you will run slower essentially um, than you might be used to um, if you are in the back of um, the last corral like I was. <laughs> I will also say that one of my big draws for these races are the character photo opportunities um, and I was again I was in the last corral for both races. I did not stop for characters in the 10k although I think if we did we would have been okay in terms of like not falling behind the pace um, after we put a couple miles in and in the half marathon I stopped for three characters on the course and I stopped for um, two characters that were right at the finish line so and I didn't get swept I don't even think I came close to getting swept <laughs> um, I was able to put enough distance down between myself and um, the very last person in the corral so it is possible even if you do get placed in the back to have a really enjoyable time. Um, I totally recommend stopping and taking photos, even if it's not with a character, like take it in, like you are able to do that and still kind of like catch yourselves up. And I think for now, those are all of the tips that I really wanted to share with y'all. I, like I said, I didn't like really take a traditional um, route <laughs> to participating in Run Disney. Um, I you know, stayed off site. I didn't submit a proof of time. I was in the last corral for both races. And I will say like, I totally understand um, that I am a more of an experienced runner. So like the being in the last corral thing was more of like a, oops, I messed up versus like, this is my experience. So um, if you're a runner who is in the last corral and you like, this is your first race or um, you're a runner who like 16 minute miles is like your normal pace and you're like a little bit worried about falling behind. Um, like I understand that my experience is gonna be like a lot different than what yours might be. Um, but I definitely think um, if you, you train well and you plan and you prepare and like, you do everything that you need to in order to make sure that you can maintain the Disney pace, then you're going to be totally fine and you're going to still be able to enjoy it as much as possible. Even when I didn't stop for um, photos uh, with the 10k, you're still able to like actually see the characters and you can like snap pics from them from outside the line and take selfies with them from outside the line. <laughs> so don't worry, you can make your experience really great. I think honestly it's all about attitude um, and really trying to appreciate what you are taking part of because Run Disney events are really really fun and really really special so um, as long as you're going in with a good positive attitude um, you're gonna have a really wonderful time. If you guys would like more Run Disney tips I would be happy to talk more about my experience. Um, that is just all the stuff that I thought um, I would kind of like fact check for y'all because there's a lot of information out there that might make you worry a little bit but I think I am kind of like proof that you can have kind of a non-traditional run Disney experience and still have a fantastic time. But if you have other questions or you'd like me to do another run Disney tips video on anything specific that um, either I mentioned here or I didn't mention here, just let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to talk more about my experience because honestly, Run Disney was so much fun and I cannot wait to go back for another one sometime in the near future. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye!